So in this presentation, we're going to look at the main uh, verbs of dplyr. So group by, summarize, filter, arrange, select, sample. Well, uh, sample and sample factors, sample n and sample frackets, a number or a fraction, and mutate. Briefly, I'll just talk about group by, actually, just to sort of move this into shot. Essentially, it's just like some data sets will have uh, variables that would sort of present very conspicuous uh, grouping structure, so you want to sort of uh, build grouping structures within the data. Uh, well known example, so you use this very um, command here, group by, okay? So uh, there's a couple more remarks there I can make, but actually I'm just going to get straight into the code here. So clear that. Uh, library dplyr. Okay, I'm only going to use dplyr in this exercise because there's another thing called the pipe operator, which is great, but for the time being, I'm going to stick with this. So there's a couple of a uh, 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 couple of things it sort of says here about uh, set theory stuff. So I'm just going to make the um, GUI preferences a bit bigger, make bigger again. If you're looking at this, it's best to watch it in full screen. I'll try this at size 16. Okay, so we have dplyr installed. Okay, so we're going to use the iris data set, iris. And we're going to have a quick look at the head of uh, Iris. And you might see that there's a column here called Species. And by the way, if you're not familiar with R at all, Iris is a uh, inbuilt data set. So, summary of Iris. There, this is more information about the species uh, uh, variable here. So there's three types of species, Setosa, Versicolor, Virginica. So we're going to split up, we're going to create a grouping structure within our data set here, Iris, that will sort of uh, look at Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica uh, separately. Okay, so, well, it will sort of uh, have the grouping structure ready in place rather than treating the entire data set as one big block. So we ha what we do here, group by Iris, just name the data set, and then the variable that we're going to uh, uh, use the uh, the variable that is that going to define our grouping structure. So here it's going to be Iris uh, uh, species. Now I can hit return there. This just uh, prints out the data set again, although it's only prints out the first ten variables or ten first ten cases. I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to update my data set here. Uh, I'm going to, uh, Iris is an uh, inbuilt data set, so I'm going to just, uh, for the sake of uh, keeping the original data set, I'm going to save it, but under a new name, so Iris Temp. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use another one here called Empty Cars. I'm going to use a second example, so I'm going to have Iris Temp and Empty Cars Temp. Uh, empty Cars, let's cl clean that for a second. So remember Iris Temp. Empty Cars is a data set also inbuilt in R and it is discussing uh, 32 types of cars, it just only has the first six and there's a couple of grouping structures that you might create cylinder, so you have six cylinder cars, four cylinder cars, eight cylinder cars or what we might do here is uh, there's two variables here, zero, one, these are binary variables, yes or no and what we might here uh, do here is create uh, four subsets based on these two variables so 0, uh, 1, 1, 1, uh, 0, 0, or it could be 0, 1 in some cases. Potentially the case that we have four subsets of empty cars based on VS and AM. So I'm going to call this empty cars, I'll tell you what, empty temp 1 is group by empty cars by cylinder and just for the sake of uh, going a bit further with that we're going to group also create another uh, temporary uh, data set called empty car or empty temp 2 and again we're going to split up empty cars by VS and AM what do we do here just name the two variables that we're going to create the group grouping structure by um, the order here, uh, you know, just watch for the order. I'm going VS first and then AM. Okay. So, that's so far so good. So, we have a couple of new objects here. Empty, Iris Temp, MT Temp 1, MT Temp 2. Let's just have a quick look. This is a very useful command here. Class. 
and empty temp1. So this will tell us it's a grouped DF, okay? Uh, a table, TBL, DF, and a table. Okay, these are all the classes that uh, dplyr would create. Let's just have a quick look at the mode command for a second. I think it doesn't really, yeah, it's just a list, okay. So, class and mode are very two useful commands for just checking out objects, okay. So I'm gonna go back to my notes here. That's group by. Uh, okay, so this is the description. Group a, TB, a table by one or more variables. Okay, that's what we've done there. Uh, that's just from the. Um, uh, that's just from the uh, help file. So let's just move on from that. Uh, this is what we're doing here. Actually, sorry, the uh, MT temp one and MT temp two. Little typo there. Uh, never mind that. Okay. Or that far. So summarize is the second of our verb. So you can use summarize with aggregate versions uh, functions which take a vector of values and return a single number. So for example min, max, mean, sum, standard deviation and so on. And there's also a couple of other ones. The number of observations and distinct observations. N underscore distinct. We'll try that out actually shortly. So uh, here's a little exercise. Um, I've gone down the wrong way. Uh, Iris temp group by species. So what we're going to do here is use summarize. By the way, the British and American spelling are both acceptable for summarize. So, but what we're going to do is uh, summarize iris temp. Okay. And what we're interested in, let's say, is the mean of petal width. So there's a variable there called petal width, capital P dot W I T H. Okay. Now. Just watch out for the brackets there as well. So there's a bracket for mean and then a bracket for summarize. Okay. So what we what happens when we run that? Well, for each species, we get the mean petal width there. So for Setosa, it's 0.246. For Versicolor, it's 1.326. For Virginica, it's 2.026. Brilliant. What we can do first off actually is we can actually just give that column a new name. So I'm just going to call it mean PW. Okay. There we go again. Uh, it's the same information, but I'm giving the column my own name, mean PW. Still go for something mean if meaningful, but this is just a name I decided on myself, whereas this over here is R code. Okay. Now we could do more than one uh, variable uh, or uh, summary statistic. Uh, what I'm also going to do here, uh, I'm going to get the standard deviation of sepal widths. That's another one of the variables in Iris. I'll just show you where that comes from actually. I'm going to hang on, I'm gonna to go to a new line here. Uh S D Sepal width. That's the name of my um new uh column in this report. And I'm gonna call the that's the standard deviation of sepal width. I'm not sure how to pronounce sepal, it may be sepal. I'm not a botanist. So just scrolling down there. We have a look at that. The uh, tree. Uh, so we have mean of standard deviation, mean of petal width, standard deviation of sepal width uh, in those variables there. And we could do a couple other things. I'll try out the end distinct command here. I'm just going to clear the screen here. That's essentially you get the gist of what summarize does now. It's pretty okay actually. Uh, I'm going to just clear the screen here. And what we'll do now is actually just have a quick look at end distinct. Uh, I'm not as familiar with it this one, so I might not get it to work, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. End distinct. Um, okay, end distinct VS. The number of distinct. Uh, uh, must be a single. Fa okay, it doesn't work. I'll tell you what. It's, I, 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 it's something I was only just going to sort of have a go with there for a second. Anyway, I'll uh, come back to it. I just really wanted to sort of introduce summarize. Um, okay. So that's just a bit of code actually I used. Uh, so filter, this is a great one now. So filter allows you to select a subset of the rows of data frame. The first argument is the name of the data set and then filtering expressions. Now this is where knowledge of logical operators come in very handy. So uh, first off we have the two equal signs, that's logical equality, the and sign, logical and, the ampersand, this little pipe operator, well it's not a pipe operator, it's pipes in, um, it's it's essentially it's between the shift key and your Z key and it's what happens when you uh, press shift so it's the 
or symbol I suppose a uh, pipe symbol is what it used to be called it's pipe symbol means something else now actually it's just to the left of the Z on your keyboard um, the exclamation mark is logical negation that means um, not not okay and that is on the keyboard that's just above one and not equal to is the uh, complement of logical equality it's just the exact opposite of this one so two equal signs is the logical equality operator and uh, not equal to is div uh, exclamation equals okay set membership is also quite useful actually this is the in operator very useful so it's actually the, uh, will tell you if a certain item is in a uh, list uh, in a little uh, list of um, list of objects so here we have a little list of objects not list in the technical sense of the word just a sort of generic sense of the word and um, suppose we have my names and we have a and D and we are interested in checking are the names in this little list and we'll, how we're going to do that is this use this little uh, uh, in operators it's handy to know it's particularly useful for filtering variables uh, let's give that a go so control L that that was a bit of a Hail Mary so anyway A is in the list so my names is A that's in my little list there's the first item D is not in the list so we get true for A false for D okay so that's quite useful in set uh, picking out um, uh, filtering operations so how uh, that's the just that there so suppose we want to uh, subset Virginica uh, so iris by the virginica species this is how we would uh, run the command here so first off I'm going to call this go, uh, this is iris now this is not iris temp iris temp has a uh, grouping structure I'm, I'm going to go back to using the main iris data set here so uh, fi, uh, iris uh, virginica the dot there is just actually just to um, make it a bit more readable for me put a little dot in between items it doesn't really mean anything in R uh, filter iris and species is equal two equal signs and also watch the quotation marks uh, Virginica uh, well also uh, what uh, watch out for capital letters there so let's have a look at iris dot verge There we have there. Um, I'll tell you what. Head of iris dot verge. It's just the virginicas on the own. So it is fifty uh, va uh, cases of virginica. Probably actually with the tail would have been probably better there. There you go. Now what we could also do is actually get the virginicas and the cetosis. Okay. So let's go back to that in uh, operator there. And let's use um, call this iris temp 2 I'm going to use a little dot there it just makes it e easier for me to read uh, iris temp 2 filter iris species capital S in and set up this little uh, vector here uh, setosa capital small S and Virginica and close that there we go let's have a quick look at we'll get the summary of iris.temp to there we go so we have the 50 Satosas and 50 Virginicas anyway in filtering I find that this is very very useful uh, species in such and such. I think I think that's actually really really useful in when you're using the filter variable. Use this in. Is it in this list? Only pick out uh, cases if the certain if species is in this list. It's like a little white list. Um, so okay, what we could also do is also just one more. I'll just do here. Iris temp three, and this is filter iris where petal width 
is greater than two or something like that. Two. Okay. That's just uh, uh, for a numeric ver variable. You can use a logical condition like that. Petal width greater than two. Summary of virus. Temp. There we go. So all the petal widths here are greater than two. Okay. Uh, do we have that many? Twenty-three. Okay. So 23 of the entire data set, and they're all Virginicas, have a petal width greater than 2. Uh, sorry, just where do you see that? Oh, sorry, it's just at the end there, it's just gone off screen. So there we have it there, 23 uh, cases selected when we done this operation. Right, let's go back to uh, what we're about here. So those just come exercises. You can use the AND and OR command for multiple logical conditions. So you can have one logical condition and the other logical condition. Or you can have one or the other, so species equals Virginica or path width greater than 3.2. Just something like that. So arrange. Now this works very similar to filter, except what we're doing is just select, uh, we're just reordering the data set according to a variable. Uh, so it's nice and easy. So the So it works in ascending order sorry ascending order so it goes from lowest to highest but if you want to change that from descending order you can go from highest to lowest okay well, I'm going to use this in the empty cars data sets and whoops go back here and uh, the empty cars data set and I'm going to use a couple of those uh, variables uh, that I talked about earlier cylinder and AM I'm going to use cylinder as my main grouping variable so let's just actually have a quick look at empty cars again. And there we go. So as you know what, head of empty cars. First eight, let's say. So we're gonna pick out um, cylinder as our first grouping variable. And so we're gonna have all the four cylinder cars, then all the six cylinder cars, then the eight cylinder cars. And within that, what we're going to do is uh, split up each group of cylinder. We're going to have, we're going to have e within each group of cylinder, we're going to have them by increasing uh, ascending order of weight um, or something like that. Or no, we'll keep it simple: miles per gallon. So first off, we'll go with cylinders and then miles per gallon. So uh, empty cars or empty cars temp temp this time just keep a temp is arrange empty cars cylinder and weight okay let's have a look at empty temp and again the reason I'm using empty temp is just to sort of so I can go back to empty cars and it's the original data set and I don't have to worry about version uh, what I've done to it uh, since I've been coding it since the start of this video it's just for the sake of um, keeping things nice and neat. So this is the empty temp data set. So here we have all the four cylinders first, okay? And within the four cylinder cars we have the miles per gallon in ascending order, okay? So here we have all the four cylinder cars and their miles per gallon is in ascending order. Then we have all the six cylinder cars. There's only a six in there and the miles per gallon is in descending order. Sorry, I've gone for weight. There was a bit of a blip there. Sorry, mental blip. I'm actually uh, weight is the one that I've used actually in the heel hunt. Let me go back and do that again. Miles per gallon. There we go. Sorry about that. There we go. No, sorry. Let's start again. Cylinder. All the four cylinder cars, and then we had the miles per gallon in ascending order. So twenty one to uh, and then. Six cylinder cars, start again, all the miles per gallon in ascending order, and so on. Suppose we want to have them in descending order of miles per gallon, just something like that. So here is what we do. We can go descending order of miles per gallon. So we put the first off in uh, ascending order of cylinders, and then descending order of um, miles per gallon. Okay, so just, it'll, uh, um, again, we'll have cylinder first, first that'll have all the lowest... Uh, the lowest group of cylinders first, the cylinder cars first, then all the miles per gallon in descending order. That's the idea of it there. It's either a descending order of this, then descending order of that, and so on. It's nice and simple, actually. 
I'm making a bit more out of it than it is. So that's a range. I tell you what, I'm going to sort of uh, cut off here and start on the other f uh, remaining variables: mutate, select, and so on. I'm just going to wrap it up this video here and go on, get started onto a second one.